everybody. Yeah, sorry. Uh, here we are again. Uh, another office hours. Matt Vanbilt here. Uh, we got uh, actually quite the full room again here today. We got uh, Clement and David and AJ. Uh, AJ is not on the audio uh, as of yet. It looks like um, they were going to go over some um, uh, onboarding stuff. Uh, is what they were looking at doing today. So AJ, are you there now? Are you ready to to go on that or? Yeah, I'm on no match. How things with you? I'm well. I'm glad to be home after VMworld, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, I understand that. Cool. Uh, yeah, let me know when you guys want me to start. Yeah, absolutely. So if you if you got something to, to, to share, go ahead and share your screen. Oh, okay, let me pull up the thing that I can share. Just a second. Uh, like I said, for for anybody out there as well. Oh, actually, let me resume the recording before I forget on the Zoom chat. So, uh, uh, before I forget, uh, the we did do um, an APJ hours uh, webinar earlier this week on uh, covering some of the announcements of VMworld. That's up on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you look for uh, VMworld Cloud Customer Success uh, on YouTube, um, also on Twitch, there's a there's a link there as well. Uh, if anybody's curious as to, as to what we covered there, so you can go to YouTube and uh, and uh, uh, get the recording uh, of what uh, what transpired. Some cool announcements. So, but I'll let you guys take it away. Well, let me know when you guys are able to see my screen. Yeah, we see it. Okay, perfect. So I'm not sure, Matt, uh, if you know what we are doing here. So this is something that uh, David Clement and I are working on. So this is specifically what we started in ANZ. Uh, so the problem which we were saying is, okay, when we get a new customer assigned, we go and talk about the VMC on AWS, what it is. Some of them already know from the paid pilot or in another way. Some of them have no idea and they have just signed up for the VMC as a part of the ELA. So we have the whole spectrum of the customers ranging from no knowledge to very familiar who have done the paid pilot. So, and then the next step is also dependent on their familiarity. So they ask, okay, if we can do a deep dive if they have no knowledge. And some of them ask if we can just give them a very high level overview. So we get all sorts of questions. And I'm moving down the line again, there was never a structured approach. Some of them say, oh, they want to have a session about Direct Connect. Some of them say they want to have a session about XCX. So there was no structured process. So what we came up with, and especially we did this for the Western Australia, where they have no familiarity with the VMC on AWS, and they wanted to know, okay, how the customer success team is gonna deliver the VMC on AWS. So this is a kind of a model, this is a three-pronged approach, which I put together, obviously with the help of David and Clement. So the stage one, which uh, I mentioned over here, this is like on a very overview. So the new customer gets signed up or they're nearing the booking and we get enrolled in the pre-sale stage. So we go to them and we say, okay, here is the VMs on AWS. We give them the overview about it, the capabilities features. The important bit from our customer success perspective over here is the business outcomes or the goals or the use case they are trying to achieve. So we capture that. And then we also capture what are the timelines they're looking for? What are the main compelling events? So we capture all of that. So that is very important from us, from customer success, because all the CSMs, they have to make a consumption plan, as you know, especially for the named accounts. So that is an important uh, factor for us to understand what they're coming for and how do their timelines look. So we discuss all about it in that uh, stage one. Yeah, we don't expect it to be like a very, very long session. We don't discuss over here with the technical team. This is more of a kind of a business discussion, talking with the head of people who signed up the deal and some of the technical leads who are involved in uh, making this decision. So this is on a very like a very business level discussion. So one that stage one is uh, uh, done and that uh, at the end of stage one, we also discuss with the head of saying that, okay, so we understand your requirement. We understand where we are going. As a next step, what we are doing in ANZ is we propose them the stage two. We propose them that we would like to have a deep dive session 
with uh, your technical team. We want to run them through all the VMC elements. We want to go through the networking and security, take their queries, tell them how our uh, uh, the networking and security works. We also talk about the different options of connecting the on-premise environment to our cloud environment. Tell them our preferred option of direct connect. So basically, we go through all the options. We also talk about the site recovery in case if their use case is the DIA. We talk about HCX, again, on the design elements as well. And then uh, we talk about the prerequisites, which is for the stage three, where we actually do the configuration and set them up. So we talk to them that, okay, this is what we need from you. We need your AWS account. We need these subnets. We want you to figure out this stuff. So we, in that session, we basically give them the whole knowledge transfer and tell them the prerequisites they need to complete so we can do the activation and onboarding for them. So it kind of sets them up for the stage three. So this we have generally accounted for like a half a day. So obviously if it is a managed account, it will be Cairo team. So it's totally up to them how they want to do. So this is very specific to the named accounts. So where we will go on site and where the architects are involved. So we go over there, we spend like a half a day with the customers, the technical teams. We will have uh, all people over there and give this all information to them. Finally, once they're done with the prerequisites, they can inform us. Generally, now I'm trying to even trying to fast track that as well. So if we are traveling to, a, if they are not like in the city where we are, so and if we are traveling there, what I'm proposing them is, Okay, here are the prerequisites. We even send them via email. We say this first day we'll be doing a deep dive for you. And the next day, we will stand you up. But otherwise, if that's not possible, what we say to them is, okay, we are done with this stage two. You have a week or two weeks to complete all the prerequisites. You have a week to figure out the subnets and everything. And once they are done with it, then we do a full day stage three workshop. So in stage three, this is the actual hands-on stuff. We go over there, we activate the subscription, we deploy the SDDC, we walk them through the whole CFP, all the options from the technical side and from my billing side, from the governance perspective, from the IAM perspective, from how to raise the support cases and everything. So we talk them through the whole CFP options. And post that, then we configure the firewall rules, which we have been discussing. We set up the connectivity between the on-prem and BMC. We set up the SCX, and we do about a three to four workloads migration with them. So we set them up, we enable them, so they can consume the uh, VMware cloud moving forward. So that's a three-pronged approach that I developed uh, uh, with these guys, and. Uh, also discuss with sales. So this is the approach we are kind of following up in ANZ at the moment. So just a, just a quick point of clarification I, I like to highlight uh, just, just for the sake of it is mm -hmm. when we talk about activating these things and configuring stuff, this is the customer doing it and us guiding them, um, which is kind of a somewhat of an important differentiation. If they actually want somebody to actually hands-on do it, um, you know, do the actual configuration for them. That's where we're supposed to uh, have our PSO and or our partners uh, leverage to do that configuration. But we could definitely guide and advise the customer uh, to do that themselves. Um, but we do not configure it, quote-unquote, for them. Yeah, no, that's fine. So it would be they are holding the clicks and everything. We guide them through it. This is what they have to do. It's interesting, we had a VCSI presentation over here. So that's uh, where the CSAs and PSO all presented together. So the important consideration, which uh, means what, what you say, I totally hear that. The way we describe it is, is slightly more uh, elaborative. So we say that CS, we are a subscription-based, right? We are not charging customers for our services. We get... Uh, allocated to the customers the moment that the, any VMC deal gets signed up. PS, the important thing to note over there is they are the transactional based. If a customer says they want them to do the migration of about 300 and 400 workloads, or if they want uh, detailed design, 
um or if they want to do the whole uh, readiness the platform readiness assessment that's where they pay to vmware psu gets involved i totally understand your point that yeah we don't do the hands on we provide the guidance so that's what we have been doing but again just for saying them like okay if we have to basically even do one or two clicks it's not we are going to say okay we want you want us to deploy this case for you or you have to pay for the pso but I think in that case customer will be saying okay you just tell me where to what to do we will do it but it will be just like kind of uh, hampering your customer experience so i don't usually generally use the word like who is hands on or who is doing it yes i totally take your point we provide the guidance customer does it but whether we do the click or customer does the click I- i'm not too first about it you see what i'm trying to explain matt yeah i i do it's just uh uh, there was much conversation yeah, um, uh, around this internally, yeah. uh, and, and also, and, and just to, to to highlight as well, there are many partners that are able to do this as well. So you don't need to use PSO uh, as well. Um, that's one option, uh, but uh, there are partners uh, as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of the partner community, so I uh, just wanted to kind of call that out as well. But yes, we will we will assist everybody on onboarding and. Uh, the total goal of this is actually that, that to make this as easy for customers to onboard so that it's just they can do it and walk through it all uh, and need very little guidance from us. That's that's what we aim for. Totally, totally. Oh, you're spot on. So when the, I was talking about this presentation, so I presented it with the PSO VP of ANZ, uh, APJ, uh, Craig Dobson. So he was presenting the skills for which the customers uh, need to pay for if they want those specific assistance. Those were, those were more, most of the migration skills and then the readiness skills. And the important thing which he highlighted when he was doing the presentation with me was like, they get engaged on a transactional basis. So I think that's the way we were presenting to the audience. So just wanna kind of um, give how we are working over here. So just wanna give you information about it. No, that's good. That's a... Uh... I mean, almost pretty much exactly what we do uh, here as well. Uh, so there's there's no not a lot of difference here. Um, now, again, there are some some slight points of clarification. So not every account will have a CSA dedicated uh, to them, and not necessarily everybody that signs up to VMware Cloud will have a CSM necessarily, uh, but the great majority will. Uh, and at least have access to it. Um, and there's a number of other resources that we're uh, working on on our end to uh, facilitate the people that either don't have a CSM or a CSA or or or, or just want to do it themselves. Uh, there's quite a few people that, that, that just want to get up and running and uh, feel confident in themselves. We do have uh, quite a few good online guides. Uh, one Dustin's uh, wrote that we've showed a couple of times. Uh, there's some good blogs out there. Uh, David has a great blog on... Um, setting up vidm um so there is quite a lot of information out there um so you know you don't you don't need to depend on us i guess is what i'm trying to say uh, we're, we're there to help absolutely uh, but you know we're you know in theory we're not required for any of this um any customer could come in actually put a credit card in and, and start running if they wanted to uh, but it's good to highlight yes that this is available uh out there um you know, especially for, for more complex uh, installations and uh, configurations that we are absolutely more than willing to uh, walk through all of these things and, and help you out. It's, I, I think, probably by far the most uh, uh, important part of this is, is those prerequisites. Um, I don't know how many calls that I've personally been on where uh, we've told them a number of times they need an AWS account and we got to that point and nobody had the AWS account. So, uh, you know, it's very good to have these all in line by the time uh, uh, the clock starts ticking on a, a subscription. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I think that's what we did for two customers here, like for HPF and Department of Jobs. So we had our on-site session. We walked them through the queries. We gave them a feel about uh, the information they wanted from us, and then we walked them through the prerequisites. Like these are the things we need from you. So when the time comes for the onboarding and activation, make sure all of these are ready. We don't want like you're saying, oh, we are ready. And then we are wasting like two or three weeks in just figuring out all these elements. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this is very good. So, um, do you guys kind of have a, a, a demo that maybe you want to go through, like what what the actual? So, so after you get all this stuff and you get the email, uh, you know, we can maybe walk through the actual onboarding, or did you guys want to show that, or we could you know move along to a different conversation? It's up to you guys. Yeah. Hey, Matt. So, so what I was thinking is that um, as part of this uh, stage one and stage two, uh, te- oh, oh, I guess the overview and the technical deep dive, um, we were we were looking at uh, perhaps just showing that the deck that we might present to the customers um, as part of that technical deep dive, and you know some of the considerations that we can think about while whilst presenting that deck. And um, yeah, I've asked uh, David to perhaps uh, just speak to his the, the deck that he's kind of put together. Um, one that we will look to to use uh, going forward, um, and 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 I guess that's uh, something that we could go over now, if David's ready. I'll stop sharing for him to share it. Okay, yeah, uh, I can share. Give me one moment. Let me share my screen. So, can you see my screen now? We can. Uh, yes, thank you. And basically, we developed this uh, slide. You know, around the, you know, it's quite a big slide. You know, around the sixty slides in total. And we developed this slide to try to give the customer quite a consistent to keep the consistent. For example, no matter who do the uh, workshop, and they will get a similar documentation and a similar information from. In addition, we can grab the different uh, experience or lessons learned from global team or locally, and so post this, this slide is more like a live documentation. We keep updating according new feature or new user case to, you know, to make sure they uh, keep uh, current and uh, valid. And uh, this, doc- this slide that we try to do is, uh, you know, knowledge transfer. And the addition is uh, for the common user case. And the addition, we try to uh, collect the, you know, suggest what is required for customer to onboarding. For example, IP addressing, like for example, firewall rules or the documentation, uh, the firewall rule requirement. That's the way we try to target. You can see from the, you know, that's the uh, this agenda. We t- we not really cover all of the function or user case. We t- we focus on, you know, like the direct connect, IPsec VPN, H6, and SI. So this is because that's the normal. That's the most of it. Uh, most of the case is covered by this one. We're not really, for example, if the customer, we not really cover everything in details and we cover based on the customer user case. For example, like one customer, they using Direct Connect to connect to their uh, on-premise environment to our SDDC, we will focus on the Direct Connect and Deep Dive. If a customer using IPsec, for example, and then we go, go to that one to cover the, give the customer Deep Dive. So yeah, from the beginning, we will, of course, we will give the customer some more like a high level view around the, our architecture, like computer storage and network. It's quite a big slide. I quickly, uh, do, you want, do you guys want me quickly go through the slide to suggest what we are covered? And uh, oh, that's it. Don't, don't go through them. Um, I think um, in detail, we'll probably take too long to, to go through all yeah. your work in detail. But yeah, just skim through kind of, have a look at what we we do cover and uh, okay. what considerations to for, yeah. for the customer there might be. Okay, cool. Uh, firstly, we will talk about you know what's the VMware Cloud and AWS, what's the service it is. Then we cover what uh, you know what region we got this service available, and this you know we will keep updating this slide to make sure that's uh, keep current. And uh, the user case. Yeah, I think case. I think that last slides are actually already out of date. Oh yeah, I, I know. I know. <laughs> okay. will, yeah, good point. Actually, I I'm going to update this one. As I mentioned in the beginning, right? This is the Matt. Uh, as I mentioned, that it's a live documentation. We need to keep updating yeah. and maintain and make sure that's the current. Yeah, no, so that's, that's right. The, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, we got a uh, you know the for you the case for our SDTC, you know the VMware Cloud on AWS solution. That's we just uh, cover that. Oh, why did not move? Okay, now we go to the computer architecture, talk about uh, what kind of nodes or V3 cluster we have, and give them some information, uh, like a I3 uh, computer cluster configuration for computing and CPU memory point of view. And the way, uh, and the cluster configuration, what you can get, for example, 
how many nodes you can get in a single cluster, what feature enabled and, uh, and for this cluster, and uh, some features customer like a uh, customer CPU call counts for the, you know, like Oracle or other, you know, license stuff. And then we cover, you know, the product, uh, stretch cluster as well. So that's it a bit of a, give more deep dive for the, the production cluster offering we have. And the story, the architecture talking about the vSAN, what we offer the vSAN here, and the disk group, and the, what feature in for the storage policy, like vSAN encryption, uh, compression, duplication. Now we go to the how many nodes, how many you know available usable capacity per nodes you can get for the i3 nodes. And the, we, you know, this slide not really of oh, uh, data encryption as well. That's you know, for customers they really concerned about that. And uh, but we not really cover the R5 here because the R5 I do have slides here, but not really showing here. It's because the R5 not available in APG level yet. So that's we try to hide that slide. Once that feature available, we will show to the customer as well. So the network architecture we are talking about how they integrated with the on-premise and how they integrated with the AWS native service. So talking about a bit of a security. So from the CDW, MGW, and the DFW point of view, what security we can offer in AWS in and, this offering. Yeah, and another nice thing that we could just really quickly add here too is this is now free. Um, so there, well, it always was free, but we had a warning saying we were going to start charging for it at some point. That's gone away, so now this will always just be included with the service. So yeah, that, that's that's a good point. That. The uh, distributed firewall service now is free now. Yeah. So we are talking about the, how the uh, gate file, you know, the firewall rules, how they apply to different place, you know, so make sure when the customer using the this firewall function, the gateway file function, they know what's the impact when they define firewall rules, what's the way we get. So talk about the, how the native AW integration to, for example, they can consume the AW native service quickly. And the micro segmentation, that's either like uh, normally, as uh, Matt just mentioned, and now this feature is uh, purely free and the customer can use that. And uh, then talking about a bit of a quicker go through what the, you know, the from network security point of view, what the VMC console look like and what feature we offer today. Yeah, that's slightly an old picture too. Sorry? I think that's slightly old picture too because it doesn't show like the uh, DHCP and stuff. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Good point. And the way, as I mentioned, that need to be keep updating this one. Yeah. For the new for the new version we got like a DHCP I can see the DHCP relay now there and now the DHCP relay is either yeah this uh, is a good service a lot of customers have yeah, yeah. It, it just for everybody knows I, I'm just pointing out because like I mean it, I have troubles keeping up I, I think everybody has trouble keeping up we we really do update very quickly so uh, yeah. uh, it's tough to yeah, keep normally, slides up to date <laughs> yeah yeah normally after we go through a slide Matt after after we go through these slides we will quickly show the VMC console to the customer. And at that time, you know, more like a show the customer the real, uh, the real world of VMC console look like. So make sure, you know, not really the slide, in, in case the slide, like now we're not really updated. Yeah. So that's the on-premise integration, two way can integrate it together, one IPsec, a VPN or direct connect. Then talking about the different, because the network guys do like what kind of option in detail, for, sorry, in details, what we can do to do the different uh, connectivity we can offer, like a L3 VPN, L2 VPN, or H6, direct connect over internet or, or at, over that direct connect. Now we're talking about the, that's a slide I'm normally sh sharing with the customer in the beginning, and uh, even before the onboarding to let them know what IP address they may be allocated uh, in advance to make sure they can, when we begin to do the SDCC deployment, they got the IP address available and that can be used. And I think to Matt's point, um, that that slide is probably key to what we need to, to share with the customer because um, a lot of that, that beginning stage or that initial stage is, is around um, this subnetting and allocation. Yes, yes. I, I normally, uh, you know, uh, send these slides to the customer, this is the IP addressing slide to the customer in the beginning. So make sure they know what IP address they can be allocated, especially, you know, like some customers, they have the partner like a Telstra in Australia. They need to be engaged the, the partner to do the IP address allocation. It's good to give all of the IP address requirement in the beginning so they can get all IP allocated 
in one go instead of kids talk to their partner. It's yeah, and, 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 a very time, time consuming. And, and you kind of cover it here, and, and Clement touched upon it, that this, this is probably the most important slide uh, because if you get this wrong, um, yeah. you need to redo it all. Exactly. exactly. Uh, mo- most exactly. of the other stuff could kind of be changed now. Yeah. Uh, and you can kind of get around this with cloud to cloud migrations now, I suppose. If you get it wrong, you can, you can do it. But yeah. eventually, you need a new SDDC if you don't get this right. So, exactly. That's why we this one I put a, a lot of effort and get you know the 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 blog get information from, uh, you know Michael's blog and uh, and to get this information correct and keep updating this one as well. Yeah, this one, I agree. That's the most important for the customer onboarding. Yeah. If it cannot be changed, it's very hard to change it. If you change, especially for, you know, for number one, the number three requirement, if you change, if you have to change, that's become more like you have to redeploy the SDT from scratch again. Okay, that's it. That's basically talk, the, the slide so far, we're talking about more like an architect want to view, a bit of a high level, and then begin to talk about the deep dive, like a, Direct neck, they're showing what's a direct neck and uh, you know the principle, what's gonna leave, you know, for example, the customer may get a dedicated direct neck or they got a hosted connection, or another option is the hosted virtual uh, interface from their partner or service provider. That's the different user case we have. So then be, give it a bit of a how the BDP working together for the virtual private interface and the so that's the things we normally give the customer to deep dive for this. In addition, we show how when the customer create the virtual interface, for example, how see the virtual interface, how they do the job, what information they require. I, I also like that, and, that you highlighted yeah. the AWS account ID because that's that's actually been the most the biggest stumbling block I've actually seen people do in, in Direct Connect is. Uh, yeah. Because you're doing it in AWS, so a lot of people think that they yeah. put their AWS account in there. Yeah. It's, yep. it's this one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's why I, I put this slide in and I put the BDP AS number. Now this BDP, before the AS number already changed to the private, you know, that slide may need to update a bit, but uh, normally, you know, they, from our, from VMC point of view, the customer required either AWS account ID as I might just highlight and the BDP local AS number. So we just suggest this to the customer and in addition, we just uh, suggest the, uh, you know, the, this uh, the white hat BDB routes, you know, the small one, 10.7.2.66, that's for 240 that's for H6. So that's gave the customer, this the, although this slide, single slide, but I cover a lot of information. We need to talk a bit of in details with the customer to let them know what we require for the, the solution for direct connect point of view. David, um, question yep. on this particular slide. Yeah. Um, just if you could go back, the the number of advertised BGP routes. Um, yeah. In, in my experience, I've noticed some with some of our customers is that um, that is one uh, AWS, AWS limit that we encounter quite early on in in yep. the migrations. Yep. Is that something uh, we you, you would consider might be worth pointing out during this initial phase or something Either that's here. Uh, Either here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, Oh, I shouldn't no interrupt worries. it's already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either, either, either there. We, because I try to put all information, especially like a limitation, to make sure the customer understand what's a limitation here. So that I put the, like a bit of a, from network guys to understand, put the BDP routing over direct net to suggest uh, what we can do and what's the best practice. For example, we suggest the customer to do, uh, you know, the routing control or on their end to, for example, to do active, active, passive, all this stuff. So you, you, you mentioned that the 16 network segments, that's the adaptive limitation, I highlight here as well to make sure the customer can be, can know this limitation aware of them so they can talk to do the right, right routing summary, yeah. Yeah, it's good for the customer to prepare for that. Thanks, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, actually, that's the slide four, you try to suggest the capability, limitation, and the best practice, knowledge transfer, and the experience sharing. That slide I try to do, you know, to transfer the, to get these things done. So that's the AppSec VPN deep dive, and the suggest uh, what feature we offered, what things we can do, and the suggest uh, like a 169 IP address. When we use this IP address, 
they no need to worry about the firewall rules and uh, why route-based VPN is highly recommended, such as uh, what's the from flexibility point of view, scalability point of view, high availability point of view, that's the best practice we always recommend. And uh, that's to give you the bit of a route-based VPN, how these things to work together, like a BDP over this, and uh, how the active, you know, the active, active things, ECMP mode, how they work together. And uh, that bit of a suggest how the configuration can be done from the VMC console point of view. Because this will be help to explain to the customer why we run BDP over that and uh, how they can configure that from, uh, from their um, point of view. So yeah, in addition, suggest uh, what the status they can get, like uh, what the IP range have been advertised through this VPN and uh, what the IP range learned from this VPN from on-premise network. So that's it uh, around the Connected, uh, connected to point of view, that is the focus on the migration, the HPM hey, we actually said. Yep. Sorry, I'm just actually more a question for Matt. Um, some of these slides that are going coming, uh, that we're going through at the moment with the route-based VPN, the subnets and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for, for instance, for HCX, there is a spreadsheet that we, we can share with a customer where they could fill out all the, pre-populate all the information for the HCX deployment. Do we, do you, I guess, in the US, um, have a similar spreadsheet that you share with customers for, you know, subnets and IPsec, uh, IPsec information, and, and and so forth? So I, I don't believe we've created anything, but I believe that uh, the PSE team, uh, our professional services engineering team, uh, if you're aware of them, they develop all the materials for PSO to do deployments, uh, have right. created a lot of that stuff. So that the material does exist. Yes. Mm -hmm. As far yeah, as I, I think we, I think we may use the same spreadsheet that's the, from the H6 team, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah. let me, yeah, I bec uh, let me move to H6. I think uh, because the Clement will talk about the H6 a bit more, so I just quickly go through here. Uh, the H6 we're talking about here is more like a capability and a user case in the first slide, then talking about a bit of a, you know, what we can do and what's the benefits, uh, what the good staff, great staff we are using H6 can achieve, especially if we have a different version, you know, you can do the different version. Uh, you no need the, the vSphere running the same version when you do the migration. Like before, you have to upgrade your on-premise environment so you can migrate the cloud, uh, migrate the workload across to cloud. And the, that's the features with what we covered. And then talking about a bit of a migration method we currently normally used or most of the customers use, like a, with, you know, zero downtime live migration. The other than the replication based on migration, that's the focal migration. And then talking about the IV update. So we just highlighted the pre preview feature and uh, suggest what limitation, what things they can do and what good stuff they have. So that's a bit of a deep dive with the H6 solution, the, what components they have and talking about uh, what a requirement, you know, from computer and storage point of view, what's a requirement for the H6 uh, virtual plant deployment. And then talking about the network requirement and talking about the bit of a deep dive for the service mesh, especially on-premise. On-premise is the complexity come from. So what's a service mesh, what a network uh, profile we required and what's the purpose and give you a bit and uh, suggest uh, like a service cluster, deployment cluster, to explain to the customer what the H6 look like and how they put together with their on-premise environment. Then that is the H6 firewall requirement suggests what firewall requirement, uh, firewall rules required before they can do any migration or service mesh, uh, create a service mesh. That's the bit of a, we cover, <coughs> we spend a lot of time with the customer uh, with uh, around that because the most of the time when H6 go to any issue, either because the firewall not opened properly on customer side. That is a bit of a general requirement or limitation. What we have, for example, the virtual machine hardware version must uh, at least the version nine or higher. And uh, you know, if they're using, they at least get a 100 megabits uh, per second to, to support the, some function and uh, the capability, the interface what the vSphere version will require. So these kind of things, just uh, try to cover all of the requirement the customer need to be prepared before we go on site to do the to help them to set up H6. That's the bit of a 
multi-site deployment strategy and some now supported L2, you know, the layer two extension topology we suggest to make sure the customers don't do these bad things because they will create some trouble for them. That is a quickly cover two slides because uh, as our experience, not much customer using SIM at this stage. So we just have two slides to cover, two or three slides to cover SIM. So that's basically, that's it. And basically that's some result to customers they can learn by themselves. Yeah, that's the slide cover. Yeah. No, that's, that's very good. Uh, I think that that covers uh, uh, pretty much really everything very well. I, I'm surprised that there's not a lot of more site recovery stuff uh, out that way. We're seeing quite a bit of that in the Americas, um, which is interesting. But uh, I, I guess maybe the markets are scratching up there a little bit um, or, or waiting for some capabilities perhaps to come in uh, with site recovery. But uh, it's another good good product. But uh, yeah, HCX for sure is, uh, is one of the key key parts to get right as well um and, and although the 100 meg is is the requirement please have higher than that depending on what you're trying to move yes um. yes so we just uh, try to, to give the uh, give the flag to the customer in the early stage instead of oh, there's something not really working as expected they come back and say oh why you didn't told us in the beginning so we try to tell them everything you know especially like this requirement in the beginning to make sure they 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 get a, they have the right expectation for the solution. Yeah, for the yeah. Uh, try not to aim for the bare minimum. Uh, try try to get what's what's adequate. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I have any customer that's actually tr done it over a hundred meg connection. Mm -hmm. uh, not large mm -hmm. moves anyway. Yeah, uh, good thing, Matt. So if you feel that there should be some more slides for the SRM, perhaps we can add that in. So let yep. me tell you where we are coming from for this pack. So we are just making it like a single pack, like a single source of truth for all our customers over here. So this is kind of mapping to the three-pronged approach I was showing you. Like we have an overview session, then we go through a deep dive, and then we do the configuration with the customer. So this pack basically we run through in the stage one and stage two with them and give them the whole information. So this kind of maps exactly to the all the detailed tasks I was showing you. If you feel that there are anything more on site recovery or anything else which needs, which is missing in this uh, pack, I, I think I'll like, we can add that in. Yeah, I think all I'll maybe to add, uh, and I guess it's just a little nitpicky, is I, I don't know if you, I don't think it covers the, the topologies uh, in here mm -hmm. uh, that you can have. Uh, oh, kind oh, of. I think yeah. that you talk about. Yeah. Yeah. A um, bit of them, we try to you know cover the topology how from a yeah. point of view. No, that's but fine. That's the, ba yeah, the basic one, but not really the complicated one. Yeah, no, I think that that's great. I think that's that's probably enough information. Uh, again, I guess if you wanted to add another one more slide, it'd be around some of the, again the re requirements and limitations of you know how many uh, how many virtual machines we can replicate per SDDC and and, and things like that uh, uh, may oh. be handy. Uh, oh, that's yeah, that's good point. Actually, we try to you know, uh, man, I try to add one thing to you know the reference. Or yeah. to learn more, either for example, the, I added the configuration maximum here. So the we highlight to the customer said it's good to check all of the configuration maximum for your, you know, for VMware cloud yeah. database. No, that, so that's great. Standarding. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I think I think I think it really uh, I think this is a, an excellent presentation. I think uh, we put this one up on on the YouTube channel that you've linked there as well uh, yeah. for quick reference for a lot of customers to have a quick overview. Mm -hmm. As well, uh, even before we, we, you know, you get involved with you guys, kind of some of the the key things on onboarding, because uh, uh, as we talked about, it's 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 easily complex if if that's a thing. Um, once you do all your due diligence, it's actually very easy after that. It's it's all the pre work and, and thinking of things. Uh, yeah. Then actually going and doing it is actually. Uh, pretty pretty simple afterwards, but yeah, getting getting everything right in the first place is uh, is crucial, uh, and that's why I, I really do like uh, what you guys have put together here. I think that uh, uh, you go through this with our our customers, and they have a very good understanding of what they need to get into it, and and that's the point, and and I think that it hits it right on the mark. Yeah, thank you, and uh, that's the thank you. I yeah, think I'm I good to know that, Matt. And what, any feedback from your side means what do you think on uh, this pack or uh, the approach I was talking to? So don't think it as like two separate things that uh, I presented and David presented. So 
what I presented that translates it into this pack. So we use this pack to demonstrate the approach which we send to the customer before we start our doing sessions with them. So any feedback from you um, on any of these two things? No, like I said, I think it's I think it's going to be very good. I think it's, it gives customers um, a lot of, of good information. Uh, I, I think you know, and again, I guess it depends if if are you just sending the pack just with the pack, or or is this going to be a presentation uh, after the fact type thing? Uh, either presentation, and sometimes we're on site to do to you know to go through this. Sometimes we're over the phone. If you know potential big customer, we go to on site. And so present to the customer that we whiteboard as well. If customer want to discuss, for example, a bit uh, deeper, so we go through. Yeah, this. I think I think it's great. Uh, like I said, I think uh, the only thing that I, that I might do, and again, I'm just kind of a perfectionist in something, so you could ignore me. Feel free to ignore me, but uh, there are certain things like um, you know the IOPS requirement for the the WAN op on. Uh, um, on HCX uh, is something that's extremely important as well. So, so there may be a, a, a few key things in there that you maybe want to highlight, uh, perhaps a little bit more to just kind of. I, I know you have it in there, uh, but it's pretty easy for some customers to kind of uh, glaze over. I think it's back one more, yeah. or a couple more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Matt, if it's yeah, like right there, because kind of, yeah. because we, we have had we have yeah. had customers run into problems. Uh, having having then went opt on on slow storage, um, so you know I don't you know I don't know if you just you know highlight it or or put a star next to it or something, but it's just uh, uh, it's one of those things. Or when you talk to them, uh, it's one of those good things to just mention because uh, you know that's kind of one of the other common problems we have. But uh, I mean I think you did an excellent job of showing all of the other uh, big ones we hit. You know like the uh, number of. Uh, uh, subnets per VIF and stuff like that, I think is uh, is good. Now, the only thing with the, the WAN opt is that could be potentially harder to change for customers after the fact, I suppose, than... Yep. Uh, okay. Matt, Matt, that's an interesting one. So with the customers that have had this challenge with the uh, slow storage for WAN opt, um, what are the typical symptoms? Are they just seeing that migration is just slow or... Yeah, you will start to get some errors uh, going through HCX. Uh, so if you're logging it, you'll start to see it. And yeah, some migrations will take extremely long times. Um, extremely long times. <laughs> so uh, that that's the typical symptom is you'll see a, 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 it doesn't look like any progress is happening. Um, okay, that's good. I, 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 will, I will highlight this, you know, the... the... 5,000 and, and again, that one's, you know, like depending on what you're doing, what you're moving and all those kinds of things, you know, you may yeah. not hit the problem, but, uh, you know, especially if you're moving, you know, very active databases that are extremely large, uh, you know, you may, you may see some, some fun and that's, and that's one of those things that usually just most people don't think of. Um, I, I know you guys know probably from experience when you say this to most people, well, what is, what, how much IOPS does something require or how many IOPS are you pushing or how many IOPS is it? most people can't answer that because for the most part, it's just kind of something that happens. Um, so it's, it's just good to kind of, kind of highlight uh, some of those uh, little things that, that could turn into big things. Yeah, thank you very much, because uh, Matt, because we haven't really seen, you know, the, uh, the storage slow issue yet. See the good. Well, it, 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 it depends. So a lot of times, you know, customers might be running vSAN on-prem and this is just mm -hmm. not an issue. Right, um, yeah. it, it, you know, it's it's kind of one of those random things where they may see the size. Oh, it's a hundred gigs. Maybe I'll put this on, you know, one of my other data stores that's got more capacity that happens to be running on slower storage. Uh, not thinking too much about it, and and it could cause a little bit of of headache. But I think, like I said, you guys did an excellent job of casting, catching most of the other stuff uh, that gives us headaches, um, particularly around the the network uh, stuff as well. Um, those are always fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a great presentation. I think that this will be, uh, I might steal this uh, from you guys as well uh, to distribute to our uh, CSM teams here uh, as well, To if that's okay. Well, I'm going to steal it anyway. I'm not really going <laughs> to. <laughs> We're just going to go with that. Because uh, I know and it's good to have everybody on the same page as well and, and distribute to it to our EMEA teams and, and Cairo teams. Um, uh, as it's just a good, it's a really good template to go through to just get you know the the what you need to know uh, to to get running. 
Um, I think it's great. Good job. Thank you. And I think it's quite important the fact that in the past, what we've done is that we've sent um, a bunch of URLs to the customer and said, okay, well, all, all the information that you need are all here. For instance, Dustin's guide, which we all, we all agree that's a, it's an excellent guide and very comprehensive, but having the customer actually read that, um, I think is a challenge. So presenting it to them, I think is, is kind of the best course of action. Um, I, I agree. We're, uh, I just had a meeting on this this morning with uh, some people around uh, better ways of, of distributing this, this type of information. And, and I think we have a communities uh, 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 forum. You guys know the VMware communities stuff. I think we have one of those spawning up. Uh, as well, but uh, you're right. I mean, Dustin's guides on on GitHub. We have documentation on you know VMware Docs, and um, but it's not easy to consume. Uh, and and we are aware of this, and, and obviously you guys are aware of this. You get the feedback from your customers as we are from ours. That you know the information is there uh, if you kind of hunt for it uh, and are willing to kind of read a bunch of stuff that may not be particular to you. Um, it's there, but it's not in a nice, clear, concise manner. That's why I, I do really like this. I think we need uh, more stuff like this to, to to simplify that that process for our customers, um, because I think that most customers just you know going through this deck even on their on their own, um, and especially with a presentation afterwards, will have a a very good understanding and, and could probably just go ahead and, and almost set this all up on their own, um, and and that's where we really need them to be as opposed to uh, like i said dustin's guy's great um but it's a kind of a dry read uh, if you're just kind of sitting there and, and reading all through it and not necessarily in the context uh uh that, that you guys put it here uh, which i think really emphasizes the point and really shows well why some of these things are necessary as opposed to kind of here's all the information so uh, i think it's good i think we need to do continue on it and do more of it and, and i hope you guys do more of it so i can steal it so i don't have to do it myself so just just a last comment um together with a slide um as uh, aj uh i guess first spoke about with the stage one and stage two and the technical dives um there there is an hcx spreadsheet that we use for to to, to capture all the installation uh requirements and and, and i guess values um, for, for the actual deployment of HCX itself. I don't think I'm going to, I was planning to go through it. Um, I don't know if we even have time to show it. Um, but what would be good is also to have a, a, a spreadsheet that included, includes all those subnets and um, other configurations like perhaps DX and IPsec. And so yeah, forth. like I said, I'll, I'll reach out to uh, Andrea, uh, Andrea Siviero, uh, a good friend of mine I've been working with for, since I started VMware. Uh, actually, maybe I've been here longer than anyway. Uh, he, he's been developing a bunch of that stuff, so that might already exist. So, uh, yeah. maybe before you go put in a whole bunch of effort in, I'll, I'll touch base with him, um, and, and actually see what I could find uh, before that. Because, like I said, he creates all the material for uh, PSO yes, yeah. to go and, yeah, and deliver. Also. So, yeah, so I think with that, I think the whole, uh, I guess, the delivery, the onboarding experience, I think would be complete. Um, and, and once we have that, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're set to, to have this uh, more structured approach that um, we're proposing. No, yeah, I, I agree completely. So I think it's very good. So I don't know if there's any uh, questions out there. Uh, we've got a few people on, on Twitch. We get uh, a couple people in uh, the Zoom. And uh, uh, but like I said, I think I think it's good. I think I said, like I said, I think I'll throw this. Uh, any objections to throwing this up on YouTube uh, for people to consume or? Did you want to maybe do a more prime time presentation of it? It's up to you guys. I think I'm okay. You can put it on YouTube. I think there is yeah. nothing wrong in it. Yeah, you can put it on YouTube. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm so, just all about trying to get as much information out to our customers as, as possible um, to consume and get ready for this stuff uh, and understand what they're getting into. Um, and like I said, you know, when you look at a lot of this stuff, it looks really complex, especially some of those HCX slides, uh, which, you know, need to be there, especially the, the firewall rules, because I, I agree, David, and, and that that is probably the biggest problem I've had with HCX deployments is the on-prem firewall. Uh, we have built-in rules kind of on our side, so you could just select the HCX services and 
uh, it's much easier on the VMC side, but yes, on the on the on premises side, uh, I've had significant challenges with with customers getting all that stuff right, and and it looks really complex, but again, you do this once, and then you get into HCX and you start moving hundreds of VMs. So I don't I don't want people to kind of take a look at this and go, oh wow, this is <laughs> this is. Ooh. I don't think I want to do this. It it looks yeah. worse than it is, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, especially yeah. some of the topology things and getting to BGP. It's fine. Like I said, once you get it all correct and set, and that's what, you know, David and Clement and AJ here have been doing a very good job of getting that information <laughs> in the front door. You get yeah. it configured right the first time. It's actually very easy then to, to implement and then just operate going forward. Yeah. yeah. And just to... Just to comment on that as well, um, what I've found is that most of our customers, and, and, and I'm assuming in the US as well, is that the all the work, all the connectivity flows there that are in green, which are pretty much the LAN requirements, most of our customers don't have any uh, firewalling in place that's between the, you know, for instance, the vCenter and the HCX yeah. manager. Yeah, you, you, so thank God for that. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. In, in those that. cases, most of the ones that we need to worry about are just the red lines that, that go to, to the cloud. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the easiest. Um, and I agree, Matt, when, when, when there's filtering and firewalling in place for those LAN connections there, it, it becomes a lot more difficult and complex. Yeah, and, and I have run into a couple of customers, uh, highly regulated ones, but those ones understand the headache. Yeah. Um, because they live it every day, <laughs> you know, so it's not, exactly. you know, when you come to them and say like, Hey, we need some more stuff. They're like, yeah, okay, we'll make the request. Um, yeah. the, the biggest problems we've had, obviously, and I'm sure you guys have had it too, is, is the, uh, UDP ports, uh, is usually the ones that somehow get missed, uh, mm. on, on firewalls, um, for some reason, because usually 443 is open anyway, yeah. usually, um, so they'll they'll connect to it and they'll be like, oh, everything works because they connect to the manager v443. But then when they actually go to do stuff, it breaks because they haven't done the other uh, firewall rules, um, which which I've seen a few times. So that's why, like I said, I, I love this. It looks scary. Uh, you know, Lance Clement said most of the green stuff's already done, uh, and when you actually look at the red stuff, there's actually only really, I guess three, well, five firewall rules you potentially need to put in depending on your firewall. Um, yeah. but then once you're done, you're done. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, yeah. now of course that there's more firewall rules, of course, for the networking side, if you want your compute networks to talk to your on premises. Um, but that's just how that works. So, um, but yeah, I think, uh, like I said, I think this is, this is great. I think it'll, uh, it'll help a lot of customers. Uh, and like I said, I think, you know, it's it seems overwhelming, but it's not really. Um, and I'm sure, like you said, after you do this presentation, you usually walk customers through kind of the portal and stuff, and actually show them what goes on. And then it's kind of like, oh, well, that's not that bad. Um, yeah. And, and it becomes uh, significantly easier. And then, and then after that, it's just selecting virtual machines and migrating them to the cloud. And you're done. Yeah. Yep. Great. Perfect. So. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to cover, uh, today? Nope, that's it. That was a lot of information. That was really good. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, update, I guess. So I will be going to VMworld EMEA now, apparently, um, because I haven't been to enough VMworlds, apparently. Uh, I think this is going to be like my 16th VM world or something, but, wow. um, <laughs> breaking records there. Right? I don't think so. I think there's guys that have been, been going for a lot longer than I have, but, uh, it, it's definitely a lot. I, I do love Barcelona. So, uh, the schedule builder for that's going live in three weeks, uh, ish, I think, uh, September 24th. Uh, I do have a session there again, uh, the same one we delivered at, uh, to a packed room actually. Uh, which is odd for the Sunday, uh, kind of before VMworld starts, but we had a packed room uh, and, and some, some good uh, scores and some good feedback. We'll be doing that same session in, in EMEA. So for anybody that's uh, out your region, now, I, I guess I asked this last week, but I don't, I don't think anybody's around, but is it, it's closer to go to San Francisco for you guys than to Barcelona? Um, or is it about the same? I, I would I say it's closer. I think uh, San Francisco is closer, I guess. Yeah, I it's think so as well. But yeah, 
Well, because you guys are on the east side of Australia, so yes. maybe yeah. if you're on the west side, it'd be quicker to Barcelona. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, from, from Sydney, it would be closer to San Francisco, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we did have a lot of APJ uh, representation uh, out there, for sure. Um, uh, we had quite a few customers from uh, the uh, Tokyo region out, um, uh, a few from India. Uh, I didn't don't know if we had too many. I, we had somebody from New Zealand uh attend our session that was well, that was pretty good um do you yeah. remember the name of that matt uh i have from New Zealand? i have his card somewhere uh i could catch up to you offline uh when i find it um and uh, okay. i know one of my australian customers who went there it was transurban i think they were specifically looking for migration and uh, they were they attended that migration hub session uh, could so have been. New, could, could, yeah, yeah, could be. We had we had a hundred and plus people in, in the room, so uh, the have, okay. Yeah, it was good, and uh, we'll good. be doing like I said, we're doing that again uh, in EMEA uh, in November. I think VMworld EMEA is November fifth through seventh. Um, for anybody that's making it out there, I think I'll probably have some more sessions uh, at customer meetings as well. Uh, we'll be back again here uh, next week. Uh, we'll see if we can actually get uh, uh, Clement or David to host the whole thing. I'll be here as well, but uh, uh, we're going to be moving to local uh, hosting uh, so you don't have the Canadian-American uh, sticking his nose into your guys' business. Um, although I'll still attend probably and, and, and at least heckle. Uh, so everything is there, and then I think... Uh, that, um, myself and AJ will be traveling next Friday, actually. Oh, okay. I guess it is Friday there. So, so I might be hosting it next weekend. Next weekend, anyway. That's that's uh, perfectly okay. Um, and then uh, I think in a couple of weeks we're gonna have uh, someone from our PSO team. So it's actually good that we were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier, uh, as we are gonna have some uh, PSO representatives coming on uh, and talking about the services that they offer. Uh, so that's kind of that uh, over and above uh, what customer success kind of does, uh, hands-on keyboard, uh, uh, you know, deliver design uh, kind of uh, activity. So PSO will come on and, uh, and detail uh, what their services are. That's going to be in a couple of weeks. I think that's going to be in the America's time zone. Uh, so for you guys, you can check it out on, on YouTube uh, afterwards. Uh, if you have any questions before that, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at VCloudMad or, or send an email to AJ Clement or uh, David or, or Baskar and, and, um, or send us an email at cloudcs at com if there's anything particularly you want to ask them and, and we'll make sure that we get that, that covered for you. Uh, but with all that, I, I thank you, all of you guys very much. Uh, again, very, very good presentation. I think uh, it's going to be extremely useful for our customers. Uh, and extremely uh, useful for our, uh, us internally uh, to deliver to more customers uh, around the world. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. All right. Well, Bye-bye. Looking forward to seeing everybody next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.